Coming up, just a day after Birmingham City Council announces big job losses, the West Midlands records the biggest fall in unemployment across the country. The Special Olympic athletes competing for gold in the Antwerp Games. And the First World War soldier whose cartoons cheered up the troops. A day after Birmingham City Council announces big job losses, the West Midlands records the biggest fall in unemployment nationally. Emmerdale's on the way in an hour after the national headlines, but first here on ITV, it's the news where you are. This is ITV News Central on the programme tonight. The biggest fall in unemployment, but with jobs under threat, could that change? There are hopes this month's Tory party conference won't be the last in Birmingham, despite the withdrawal of council funding. How did Richard III die at the Battle of Bosworth? Scientists think they finally have the answer. And the First World War soldier whose cartoons brought much-needed smiles to the troops. Good evening. As Birmingham comes to terms with the news that thousands more council jobs may be lost, new figures have been published which suggest that things perhaps are more positive. So tonight we ask, can private companies really step in to ease the pain of those public sector job cuts? Well, today's unemployment figures were some of the most promising in years. Between May and July, unemployment fell by 9,000 in the West Midlands. That's the biggest fall anywhere in the country. The total number of those without a job in our region now stands at under 200,000. But the rate of unemployment is still higher than the national average at just over 7%. The fall in unemployment figures needs to continue. Just yesterday, there was shock after Birmingham City Council announced 6,000 workers could be unemployed in the next four years. Today, meetings have been held between council bosses and unions to discuss how the administration can cut its wage bill without adding to the city's dole queue. The wider impact is that the unemployment figures will rise significantly. Uh, that will have a, an impact on the economy and what people can spend. Uh, inflation, everything will be impacted as a result of these job losses because for every, every person that works in the council, on average, they spend 52 pence in the economy per pound. Now that money is going to be gone. So where is the benefit to Birmingham? Well, if the cuts continue to public sector jobs, private companies will need to grow. And here again, it's a mixed picture. In Stoke and North Staffordshire, there are fewer people out of work than at any point in the last seven years. However, earlier this week, the Staffordshire firm Phones for You was placed into administration, putting 5,500 jobs at risk. Tonight, though, it's been announced that 800 employees will be taken on by Dixon's car phone warehouse. Our business correspondent Mark Goff now reports on the support enabling private firms to grow. When this packaging firm wanted to start a factory in North Staffordshire, the County Council and Stoke City Council found the premises for them, gave them £25,000 and even organised the interviews with the new recruits. Finding uh, the initial employees, that was really helpful because they did a lot of the interviewing for us while we were busy, you know, getting the machines in and getting the other items in place for the factory. The unemployment rate in Staffordshire is low, just 1.3% of the population, which is back to where it was pre-recession. So, what are they doing right? The most important thing we're doing is making it easy for business. We want to help them, we want to help, to help them set up, we want to help them with the properties they need, we want to make sure that, that uh, there's a business loan service, that they can, they can get loans when the banks probably aren't being as helpful as possible. Uh, and we're helping them with skills and, and helping them to get uh, workers that uh, are fit for purpose. We go to industry and we say, what sort of workers do you want? We then go to the colleges and say, these are the type of jobs we want. We don't want 400 hairdressers, we want 400 automotive engineers. And that's, that's as simple as it is. 
The low unemployment figures don't take into account phones for you, which went into administration this week. Neither will the 6,000 job losses announced by Birmingham City Council yesterday be included in the regional figures. But Staffordshire is bucking the trend. Limedale Business Centre is run by Staffordshire County Council and is home to several start-ups. Martin Bowes makes flat-screen displays for motor racing, defence and food firms. Staffordshire County Council has helped him. We asked them for some marketing support in terms of food industries um, that we could approach in the local area and we won two contracts out of that, one for Heinz in Telford and the other one for Weetabix, so we were really pleased with the results. And the council helped this firm making promotional gifts. We went to the council for help with marketing and, and uh, direction on the business and it helped us because we were able to target particular areas that were most profitable for us and because of that we've seen massive growth. I think we grew by 60% last year and already this year we're 20% up on that 60% of growth so things are going well. phones for You employs more than 5,000 people around the country, several hundred of them in Staffordshire but the councils believe that with their track record in creating jobs, getting people back to work won't be that difficult. Mark Goff, ITV News, Staffordshire. Well, the government has been reacting to these more positive unemployment figures for our region today, saying they are largely down to private firms taking on new staff. This is one of the great powerhouses of the United Kingdom in industrial terms. And so seeing employment return, we're seeing private sector job employment return and we're seeing unemployment fall. Uh, so in that sense, this is very good news for them. But again, I stress the point that the job is not yet done. But opposition politicians are doubtful that private companies can provide enough jobs to fill the void that's predicted in the West Midlands. So, to recap, despite the recent announcement on job losses, the West Midlands has recorded the biggest fall in unemployment nationally. We have further analysis on today's figures and you can find those on our website, itv.com slash central. Well, it's not just employees of the City Council that could be affected by the cuts, but those businesses that have previously benefited from investment in big events, like the Tory party conference. The annual event is estimated to bring in £17 million to the local economy, but has had its council funding withdrawn. The city is preparing to host the next Conservative conference later this month. But despite the cuts, the Chamber of Commerce says it's very confident that all is not lost, despite speculation that next year's event could switch to Manchester. The speculation that next year's event will be switched to Manchester is obviously causing concern, as Keith Wilkinson reports. 14,000 delegates will soon be heading to Birmingham for the Conservative Party conference. Events like these bring worldwide publicity to the city and much prestige. There were fears that the city would lose out because of the ending of council subsidies towards the cost. But the Chamber of Commerce says it has high hopes that behind the scenes talks to continue party conferences will be successful. I don't think all is yet lost. I know from the contacts we've got in the Conservative Party that they welcome this city. They like This city works for them as a conference city. It's, it's the best city that they run conferences in. So we're hoping that there will still be a way to keep them. The Tory party says no decisions have been announced. The ICC conference venue is in talks that could involve private funding. We think they may be going to Manchester next year. Uh, have you heard that they're going to come back to Birmingham at all? We're talking to all of the political parties all of the time because obviously we're interested in securing their future events so um, at this moment I don't know but we are still talking to all the political parties. I think what it means for conference organisers and actually event organisers of all kinds of shapes and sizes is a different way of doing things so what you're seeing in Birmingham and I have to say in other UK cities as well is a change to the model as to how major event organisers work with cities so I think everyone's working through what that means in commercial terms but as I say Birmingham remains a very competitive and exciting destination. Well over recent years Birmingham City Council has actually subsidised the party political conferences uh, and that's over both the Conservative Conference and the Lib Dem Conference. Uh, probably uh, uh, between the two, something of the order of uh, two and a half 
million perhaps, and that's the equivalent of 1% rise on council tax. I think it's quite wrong uh, for uh, Birmingham, for Manchester, for others to subsidise the political conferences. The parties themselves should pay for those conferences. I think that's what will happen. Uh, they'll renegotiate deals with the conference centres, with Birmingham, with Manchester, with Liverpool, uh, and I fully suspect that uh, the party political conferences will be back here in Birmingham in future years, but where the parties themselves are paying for it. As usual, there'll be a massive police operation surrounding the conference. The threat of terrorism in the UK has been assessed by the government as severe and the threat level for disturbances during the conference has also been raised but not because of any terrorism concerns. The threat level since the last conference that we hosted in 2012 uh, has gone up from low to moderate. Um, the threat level uh, this year is judged on the possibility that we could get people who, who choose to protest, uh, who, who don't want to comply with us, who, who may choose to protest in a way that, that could lead to, to violence. Despite the cost of hundreds of police officers a day here, it's estimated the event will bring in £17 million to Birmingham. Money city businesses hope they won't lose in the future. Keith Wilkinson, ITV News. In other news, three men have been arrested after it's believed they hid on a lorry travelling from France but fell off as the lorry travelled on the M6 north of Birmingham. The men, who were thought to be from Africa, are being questioned on suspicion of immigration offences after being seen walking on the northbound carriageway this morning just after nine o'clock. Police say it appears they may have been trying to get into the country illegally. Fire crews are damping down at the scene of a major fire at a scrap metal plant in Wolverhampton. Thick black smoke could be seen around the city after the fire broke out in Eastfield. At its height, more than 40 firefighters were dealing with the blaze. A body has been found in a children's playground in Birmingham. The man was found dead at Gilberston Recreation Ground in Yardley shortly after 7 o'clock this morning. Forensics officers have been on the scene to gather evidence. Detectives say they're not treating his death as suspicious. CCTV has been released at the moment. A man tried to steal a piece of art commemorating the First World War from a gallery in Birmingham. He walked around the Castle Fine Art Gallery in the ICC on Broad Street last month before lifting a piece from the wall and trying to hide it in his jacket. Police say he was spotted by staff and handed back the artwork but left the store. Officers want to catch him and are asking for anyone with information to get in touch. Former UKIP MEP Nikki Sinclair has been in court today, accused of money laundering and misconduct in public office. Sinclair, who lost her seat this year, appeared before Birmingham magistrates to face charges that she claimed false travel expenses and then laundered the money by moving it between accounts while representing the Midlands in Europe. She was granted bail until January and denies the allegations. Thousands of people have signed a petition calling for the trust which runs Stafford Hospital to rethink plans to cut back children's services. Almost 4,000 people have backed a campaign which was launched online last night as hundreds of protesters gathered at Stafford Hospital as the clinical commissioning group held their AGM. The group is campaigning to keep maternity and paediatric services at the hospital.